Hi, welcome to chapter two of tutorial one for collections managers on SARS. In this tutorial, we'll cover the setup of your museum on SARS, and in the next chapter, we'll start creating objects. The first step before you actually move on to setting up your museum is to check whether your profile exists on the system. So to do that, go to my account and on the right hand side check whether you have a profile page. So this demo user does have one and this is the link to the profile that has been created. If this is blank, please click on create a profile and this will take you to the uh, profile page where you can create your uh, details, your full name, your organization, your profession, email address and physical address. Uh, and then the group tags define more or less your various expertise uh, and help us to describe you and, and your use of the system. This has nothing to do with your user rights in the system, but it may affect where you are filtered and available in the choices for the particular drop downs or the various drop downs on the system. All of the content on SARS is linked to the profiles of organizations or people. It does not relate necessarily to the user accounts in the system. In other words, someone might have died in 1950 and is linked to a victim of conflict content type. And it's not the user account we're interested in there, it's the actual profile. So it's very important that you don't do anything else uh, before you log on, when you first log on to Soros, before you've actually created your profile. So that's the first thing you need to do and then from there we are able to uh, def link the, the various content um, to your, your unique profile. At the bottom you'll hit the save button and uh, this will return you back to the My Account page. The second step for museums is to create your museum. This particular user is not linked to any uh, museum and so we'll start this from scratch and work through the, the process, which is quite simple. So we'd like to go to the create menu page and then add content organizations. And let's create a test museum. So I'll put test museum and you'll see the related content box tries to find content which has a title simly, similar to this. So if I just go back to test, uh, you'll see Terra Test already exists on the system and uh, the Protestant has got the test uh, sequence in it as well. So those came up as two matches. Uh, the Cosalina Natal Museum, for instance, let's have a look. So there's various matches and there's the Cosalina uh, Cultural Museum is a match. So that one already exists. So we wouldn't want to duplicate the content and the related content helps us to find that. But let's continue with creating a test museum. It is unique and we can create additional info, an acronym. Um, I'm going to tick group because this museum needs to have secure organic group permissions and we'll, we'll explain that in much more depth in the next chapters. The organization type in this case would be museum dates established, contact details, uh, general address, logo, and you can upload additional organization docs, and at the bottom hit save. So as I'm the user applicant creating this test museum, I am now by default the group manager of that museum, and I can include other people uh, that I choose into my, my organic group who have then subsequently have permission to access the objects I create in the museum. If I don't invite other members to the group, they won't have edit permissions on my objects and the visibility of the objects to various users will be controlled by other users in this group. On the right hand side, I can see my organic group ID and this is used in some of the reports where you need to filter out the ID. That's the first step. So we've created our museum. The next step is to create our locations in the museum. So go back to the create menu, go to objects and then object locations. Now locations can be anything. It can be a cupboard, it can be a room, it can be a, an area outside of the museum, uh, it could be a cabinet, a drawer, uh, a 
the bottle. Um, just depends how specific you want to be about your museum locations and how you'd like to account for the objects within them. So if you ever have a question such as, you know, how many objects are in this particular location and I'd like to audit and stock take them in inverted commas, then you need to create a location code and move the objects and accession them into that location. So I'm going to have four location codes for this tutorial. I'm going to use uh, shelf one as a code. Um, well, let's let's make instead of shelf one, let's call it call it shelf one, and call code um, test dash s o double one or s double one. Let's do shelf double one. Okay. So you can make the codes up as you go along. It's up to, entirely up to you how you'd like to code your museum. Um, but obviously acronyms which stand for something make, make more sense. You can give it a long description. Um, and then the audience is very important. So I'd like to point this at my test museum. So this is the relevant organic group which uh, this location belongs to. And then location codes are always private. We do this because we don't want to allow people on the website to browse the actual locations of your ob objects for obvious reasons. If I'd like to go on to create other locations, hit save and add another. If I'm finished, I'll just hit save and it'll return me back to the normal menu. So we're gonna create four locations. The next one we'll call room, let's call it open room. And we'll have a cabinet and we'll have a a hall. So let's make the next one. This is an open room. So OR001 and test museum. And if you want to speed things up, you can duplicate the tab. Just use the right click menu option on your mouse and you can get um, various pages open using um, the web browser to speed things up. We are using Google Chrome. Um, we find this is the best browser to, to use Cyrus. Um, if you use Internet Explorer, please make sure you have Internet Explorer 9 or above, which requires Vista as the operating system or higher, um, or Firefox with all the updated plugins. Safari and Opera also work just fine. But we find with Google Chrome, you don't have to download too many of the additional plugins uh, to make Cyrus work correctly from the first go. Our next location, let's call this one um, Cabinet 1. So let's do C and we'll call this one Cabinet 1. And the last one, let's call this one uh, Hall. So we have our various location co codes created and they belong to this organic group. So if I go to explore my content, everything I've authored as this user is available to me on the system. So I can see all the locations are created, test S001, O001, C001 and H001. Uh, and those were created by this user. There's are other ways to browse similar information. If I'd like to browse all content to which I have permission, I can click on the content manager and I can then filter for locations and we'll filter out all locations that are available to me in the system. So let me do that, hit filter and there's all the locations. So there's also another one and this is a public location which is why I can see it. The, uh, the next step is to create objects into the museum. But now that we have our, our museum and we have our locations, we can close this chapter here and then in the next chapter we'll move on to actually creating an object and placing them in those locations in subsequent tutorials.